Hello, it's me, Caitlin. And it's me, Dermot, and welcome back to Understanding the Mass. Understanding the Mass will explore all different aspects of Mass in the Catholic Church. All the different elements and stages that come together to make Mass what it is. Each week we are really lucky because we are joined by the amazing Father Michael Sheehan, parish priest of Drumbo and Carrie Father Michael is extremely knowledgeable and hopefully he can answer some of our questions and give us a greater understanding of the Mass. We're back in the parish of Kaidoff and Drumbo to have another wee chat with Father Michael. So Father, we notice when we go to Mass that the priests will wear a different coloured vestment and at different times of the year that'll change. Can you tell us a little bit about the significance of those colours? Yes. Uh, normally when we vest for Mass, we would put on what we call, some priests would wear an amas. So an amas is a square white or cream piece of linen or cotton. And you usually wear it simply to, one, to hide your colour. Or if I'm not wearing my collar, I'm wearing a shirt, so it hides that as well. So we wear that really for that purpose to cover, but also that when vestments go on, that they're kept clean. Because vestments are, they're only produced, there's only so many of them that we would use, so they're usually very expensive. I mean, we have some vestments here, some of the stuff we have, there would be nearly a £1,000 per vestment. So if you're buying a set being related to the colours that we use, there could be, you could be spending £5,000 just on vestments. And generally they're handmade, uh, and in other cases they have embroidery and pieces added to them. But they form five block colours, generally five, sometimes six. So we wear white, which is used for the celebrations of Christmas, Easter, it's used for high feasts. Sometimes the white may be replaced by gold, but very few places would have gold vestments, because although they're dear, gold is ludicrously expensive. Uh, so we wear those for celebrations, so particular feast days, Easter, Christmas, we wear it for the Feast of the Solemnity of Our Lady, uh, St. Joseph, different things like that. After that, well, other feasts that we would celebrate, we would say with the Feast of the Apostles and of Martyrs, and say of, Holy, of the Holy Spirit. So we wear red, this colour of blood, and the colour of fire. So we wear red for the Holy Spirit, red for the Apostles, and red for Martyrs. In the church's calendar more recently, we had the feast of St. Thomas. So Thomas is an apostle, so we were red for him. We were red for Peter, Paul, other martyrs as well. St. Oliver Plunkett, we would wear red. After red, the other colours and celebrations, we would have purple, which is mainly used for funerals, although sometimes people may wear black vestments. So purple is mainly used for funerals, and it's used for penitential seasons. So it's used in the season of Advent and in the season of Lent. So that would be very obvious and people can connect, connect that with the, at Advent we wear purple vestments, so we also, you would notice the purple candles are lit on the Advent wreath. The Advent wreath has one other color on it, which is rose. Rose is a vestment that's worn only twice in the church's year. It's two days in the church's year. It's worn on the third Sunday of Advent and it's worn on one of the Sundays in Lent as well. Uh, so they have two names, Gaudate Sunday and Latare Sunday. Uh, so the rose is worn those two Sundays, and that's the only time it's worn. And the other colour we wear would be green. Green is the colour of hope. When you look around, trees are green, the grass is green. It's a sign of life and of spring and all that sense of life. So green is worn for all the other times of the year that we don't have feasts or apostles or penitential seasons. So generally we wear green most times. So when the priest first vest, you put the amas on, then we put a, a white or cream garment on, which we call the alb. An alb is just a Latin name for white. So it's worn, and then over the alb, you would put a stole. And the stole takes a significance in, 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 in back to ancient times as well. In, in Roman times, if, the, if a message was coming from the king or from the emperor, the messenger would usually carry a signature of some sort or other. And sometimes the, the emperor's um, would have, their messengers would have worn a particular colour or stole or scarf, which signified that they were a messenger from the king or the emperor. So a deacon wears his stole over his left shoulder and it comes across his chest and then it's, it's usually tied at the side. And sometimes the deacon's stole is tied with what we call a cincture or a belt. Before the Vatican Council, it, all the vestments had significance. Um, so the amas that we would put on was a sign of the yoke of Christ. The stole was the sign of the, the minister of the gospel. So when Christians were baptized in the early church, they would have worn white as a sign that they were been renewed and reborn in Christ. So the, the alb is a sign of the baptismal robe in a sense, and being incorporated into Christ. And then the chasuble is 
They come in different shapes and sizes, but they're generally that's the main colour that we would wear, which is the of, of the overvestment that most people would see. The cincture would have been a sign of um, like a girdle or being supported and strengthened in Christ. And it has the practical point of if your alb is too long, that it acts like a belt, so pulls it pulls up a bit. Now, Father, do these vestments have to be worn to celebrate Mass? Generally, most of the church's guidelines about the celebration of Mass are things that have been there for a long time. So I wouldn't have to celebrate wearing vestments. Generally, we do because it's all part of the liturgical theatre and the drama that all goes on, and it adds significance, it adds colour. Um, if you go back to into the time of the Reformation, since the Reformation, the Reformed churches don't wear, very rarely wear colour. The Episcopalian church might wear colour on different occasions, but generally not. So generally, if you say if here in the Church of Ireland or the Church of England, Church of Scotland, just wear a black scarf or a stool. So they removed colour. Um, but colour adds a sense of celebration. It's also used, as we've just explained, to signify different events. So if you walk in and the priest is wearing purple, which is also worn at a funeral, I should say, um, it's either Advent, Lent, or you're at a funeral. Unless he's colour blind and has put on the wrong colour by accident. Well, that certainly was a colourful experience. Better dressed than you, Dermot. <laughs> well, anyway, make sure to like, share and subscribe. And we'll see you next week.